today? No, sweet. One billionth. Indeed. Live streamsies. What? Mavericks. Mavericks. You gotta have my Mavericks. You gotta have Mavericks. Man, I can't. I can't upgrade. I gotta have Mavericks. Why don't you just update your software? I can't, man. I can't. I gotta have. It's stolen. It's internet. Internet internet stolen. Internet will allow me to steal more. Go from yelling at me. See, I'm going to prison. I've already gotten the FBI warning. How's my tooth? Uh, it's not hurting today. I go tomorrow to have it coot out. I'm just glad it's not hurting today. Yesterday, it hurt all day. I even took a, um, is it glitching now? Man, yeah, it's starting to lag up again. I don't understand why it's fucking lagging lately. I need to get another webcam. Down here, like this one. And that way, we ain't gotta worry about this bullshit. Whee! Alright, so exposure to the millionth power. <sighs> yeah, that's the that's the uh, PMIC. Man, now it's really lagging. I don't know why that webcam lags so bad now, but fuck it. It didn't used to do that, but now all of a sudden it's decided it wants to lag all the time. I'm gonna. Let's see. Output set to hardware. Higher equals less cheap CPU. Highest quality. Apply. Eh, fuck it. Let me adjust my sizing on the chat window down there. Bottom 230. Nope. Uh, 280. Nope. 260. Nope. 250. That looks better. I'm feeling better. Still not 100%, but better, much better than yesterday. All right, so I've already been working on this one before I started stream, and then I realized, hey, I should probably stream this. So I'm now streaming it. Uh, this iPad Air came in with uh, no power and had this entire area right here completely exploded uh, replaced all the components there that were bad but it still would not turn on and I realized the PMIC had a VCC main short under it so now I've got the old PMIC off and I pulled the PMIC from another board and reballed it so there's our new PMIC, or new to this board. So I'm going to check and make sure that my pads here that look to be NC pads are indeed NC pads. And then I'm going to place this PMIC on the board. And hopefully, if everything works as it should, 
we will have a working iPad Air 2. Or it could catastrophically go wrong and piss me off to no end. The uh, iPhone 6 Plus that I was working on the other day, I have now put three different NANDs on it after reprogramming all of them. And even the original one, including the um, well, that sucks. All those are ground. Uh, including the original NAND and others, for some reason, it will not fucking work. Alright, so I can't remember the original position for the fucking PMIC. Let's see if this one gives me any hints. This is the one that came off of it. So it looks like it was probably that way. Since our two lifted pads are right there, it had to have been that way. Another way we can tell, I can look at this edge and see if there's conformal coating on it and there is so that tells me that that edge was indeed butted up against there so pin one will be right here like so let's see if we can put this back on successfully without shorting any of these together and fingers crossed it will work again like it should Guy out of Louisville. Uh, Dal? Uh, his name's Ron. Okay, he used to work for you. Alright. I don't know who you mean. That's cool. If you're interested sometime, I'll, I haven't talked to him in a while. We have an account with them. Okay. We've been doing better with uh, another outfit. And, uh, I don't know how much of it you do. Uh, we don't do a whole lot. See ya. What, uh, what does that have to do with us? I don't know. Is he saying that they bought it from us? I guess so. Well, you can bring it back. 
If it's a bluegrass one, it doesn't really fucking matter. You did sell six sixes plus to one, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you should have brought it back in here. Or at least talk to us about it. I would think he would. Huh? Yeah. I would think he would. Yeah. Alright. PMIC seems like it's down. What did we sell him? It was a 6S, wasn't it? I can't remember if it was a 6S or a 6S Plus. It's a 6S. I remember it was a 6S, a 6S series, so I just can't remember if it was a regular or a plus. Mm. I don't know what the hell he's talking about, though. Any phone that I would have sold would have been a uh, bluegrass phone, most likely. I doubt I would have bought an AT&T phone because of that. Well, like I said, if he would have came in here, we would have made it right, give him a refund or, or done something. You know, it wasn't I'm not sure. I'm back not back. sure why he wouldn't come back here. That would be weird. Yeah, that would be pretty weird. You think he'd want to lease his money back or something, or or do something, you know? Alright, so we no longer have a VCC main short. We were dead shorted here. Let's see what our diode reading gives us. Diode looks about right for the airs. If I remember correctly, the airs read pretty low. Let me see, this one doesn't have a PMIC on it, but... Yeah, they read fairly low. That one's reading 0.15, this one reads 0.13, so. That seems okay, acceptable to me. Let me see that frame, Micah. Okay. All right. Let me see the screen also. Right now, too. I want everything and I want it now. Don't care how I want it now. Because Chris is bad, eh? Womp. <laughs> Alright, so I've got the battery disconnected with the uh, guitar pick. I want to make sure that my battery is not connected while I'm plugging in the screen because these, like the iPhone 6S, are not very happy when you when you do such a thing. Okay, let's see here if I can do this without completely fucking it. Let's see if I can plug in my power button flex here. Let's see if it'll turn on. Or is it 100% dead? Okay, let's plug in our charging cable. It may be dead. Or the PMIC's bad. Or I didn't place the PMIC right. Who knows? I don't know. The, the PMIC placement looks okay, so I'm fairly confident in that. Let's see if we just have. A shitty connection or a dead battery more or less actually okay so charger ports right here Let's see if I can do this without
currently getting nothing at all. So I'm going to disconnect all this and then try Okay, that's all disconnected. Makes me wonder if the charging port has come up or not. Let me check my voltages coming in off the charging port. from the charging port. Uh, I don't think we replaced the screens on those. I mean, there's too, there's too much uh, risk involved in replacing those. There. Okay. No problem. Sorry. Let's see what voltages we're getting. From my five volt input rails. Can't remember exactly which ones they are. Let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, so it should be coming in on these rails here but that's not correct so the voltage that I'm getting in from the USB charger is 2.5 volts why is it 2.5 volts let's check the diode on this line diode reading seems okay why are we getting two and a half volts and we should be getting five. So for some reason I'm getting 2.5 volts output. Nothing's getting hot. I have replaced TriStar because I was wondering if it was the TriStar chip that got fucked because these lines go directly to TriStar. But Let's see, what can we do here? I can solder 5 volts directly to it. I would think if there's a short or something that that line would get pulled a lot lower than 5. see what I'm getting with battery voltage plugged in. I'm getting 4.1 volts from the battery. So technically that should turn on. Let's see what it does.
CPU's heating up. PMIC is getting warm. still getting hot. Now it's getting hot in other places. The PMSC is not getting hot anymore. I mean it gets warm but it's not like it was before. Now I'm getting heat in other areas. CPU is getting hot but I don't know if it's abnormal or not well we got another burn mark down here I didn't even notice so let's check that out I just saw that so that could be another reason why we're getting no boot did not notice that we had a short down here which looks to be around the maybe the audio IC or something Let's go ahead and take it off the board and see what's going on under it. I didn't even notice that before, although I wasn't really paying attention to this end of the board because most of my damage was on the other end. I'm really interested to know how or what caused the other issue because like, it looked exactly like that on the other end, like just completely exploded components. Almost like the charging port or something got a huge rush of of current from something and caused all this to fail. Yeah, Anthony, this is the iPad you sent. Come on, baby. Yeah, we're missing a few pads there. So, let's see what all is missing there. Those pads are gone, whatever that was connected to. This thing's seen some pretty serious uh, voltage at one point. Is this the YouTube experience? This, this, this is starting to become the the Chris Long stream experience. Let's see what shit's blown up. I'm not sure what caused this. This has to be related to the same thing, whatever happened to the charging port, because the symptoms look the same, the same fucking burn marks and everything on it. The section over near the, uh, the battery looked exactly like this. It was pretty badly burned. Yeah, it does look pretty wrecked. 
it's missing four pads on this corner completely. They're burnt all to hell. Anthony just got this one in from a customer, I believe. I don't think they even did anything to it. Alright, so let's try this again. Let's see if I get any different... different reaction. It's almost like, like Tristar is dead again. That's what it was doing when it came in. Tristar acted dead. I replaced it and it, it started acting normally. Yeah, it definitely could be a counterfeit charger. That's for damn sure. Alright, let's see what happens when we plug her in here. I don't think anything's going to happen because TriStar is not working right now for some reason. I'll replace it again, I guess, if we can get some action out of this thing. Yeah, CPU is getting warm. I want to see if it will actually turn on. That's all I'm really looking to see. I'm not overly concerned right now. If I mean, CPU is going to get hot on boot up. That's just what's going to happen. It's usually the hottest time that the CPU has, is that initial load. I feel like it's getting a little warmer than it should, though. But at the same time, I don't, I don't handle or work on iPads very often, so. Let's see if it'll boot up. Still getting pretty warm. PMIC is warm but not hot. CPU is hot. Yeah, like the CPU is fucking hot, hot. Hotter than I would, I would expect it to be. Still hasn't booted. I'll give it a few more seconds to see if it will. Although if TriStar is not working, I may not be able to even tell. Let me try putting the screen on and, and booting it up and see. These things, when TriStar is bad, you can get the the device to boot from plugging in a charging cable sometimes, but it, it won't recognize computer and it won't it won't uh, charge the battery at all. But maybe we can see if we got an image. Although I don't know if it's going to be worth fixing with the uh, if that's the audio I see down there that's fucked up, which I suspect it is. We'll have to see what those lines go to. Maybe they're just for the uh, auxiliary stuff through the lightning port or something. Alright, so those are hooked up. Let's set it back on the battery. And let's plug her in. Yeah, we got nothing. See, is CPU getting hot? Yep, CPU's warming up. I got no image, though. Let me see if maybe I have no backlight for some reason. got nothing on screen and the CPU is getting warm well Anthony I don't think this one's gonna be a fixer something hit the board with a shit ton of current enough to burn up that IC and burn up the components around the uh, battery connector and my suspicions would be since it got enough to the PMIC to short the PMIC internally um, yeah, the CPU is just fucking blistering hot right now. I'm going to guess the CPU saw some voltage that it wasn't supposed to see at some point. Well, at least we got... I got a lot of experience out, 
after taking the PMIC off and reballing it. The Air 2s are actually not too bad. Uh, yeah, it probably was 1.21 gigawatts. Uh, at least it's got a good screen on it. I mean, screen's worth some money. So if you want to at least salvage the screen and your part, you got a parts board now, so the board should be good to go. Um, the part, the boards are, are decent for parts. They've got touch ICs on them that we've had to replace before after lady brought a, her Air, in, Air 2 in after her dog chewed on the corner. And it was down here in this corner at the bottom near the charge flex. And we put it back together and touch wouldn't work. So we opened up this little shield. And lo and behold, there is two cumulus and a mason chip right here. Uh, this mason chip is different from the other ones though. But the dog had bit and broke the mason chip on this corner. So, But the iPad Air 2 has two cumulus and one mason. So if you have touch issues on the Air 2s, it's down here. So we're going to call that one um, based on the fact that the CPU is getting hot. I would say we have a CPU problem. <laughs> also the fact that we had components burnt here and we had components burnt here and the PMIC was dead. I would say we probably have other chips like the NAND or the RAM or other components like the CPU that are probably fucked. A DSLR? Uh, no, because I don't have a DSLR camera. <laughs> they do do. Uh, they do have a better photo. I'm actually going to get an HDMI camera here in a little while. Uh, that way, the picture quality is better and the frame rate's higher. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll call that one. Sorry, Anthony, we couldn't get that one working. We'll put it back in the packaging and ship it out. So, on to our next devices. <laughs> we have a iPhone 6S that is turning on. TriStar checks out good, but it doesn't charge. It just sits there. Um, doesn't do anything. It just sits there and and thinks about charging. It shows that it's charging, but it's not charging. So, what would the symptoms be if we have uh, the USB is recognized? So we can see the the device sees the TriStar. The device says that it's charging, but the device does not charge. What would you think is the problem? Mikey, you can chime in too. I didn't hear you. iPhone 6S. When you plug in it, plug it in without a battery, the amperage jumps up and down like it would if TriStar was is good. It, it pops the Apple logo up and then it turns off. Then it pops the Apple logo up and it turns off. Goodness. If you plug in a good battery, it'll boot all the way up and says that it's charging, but it doesn't pull any amperage. When the screen's on, it pulls amperage. As soon as the screen goes off, it stops pulling amperage. So what would cause it to say that it's charging, but not actually charge? Well, since it's saying that trying to charge, is it detect by the PC as well? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Then, that, then I'd say TriStar is good, but what about the gate? Okay, so could it be the gate? Or could it be what controls the gate? Which would be so chat's, chat's saying Tigris and Micah says Tigris. I was just saying that 
Tigris is that ship, but okay, so but I'm I'm thinking it's the gate. You think I'm it's the actual gate. gate is bad? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with gate. Okay. So Chad says Tigris. Micah says the gate that it's not Tigris. Uh, either one could be correct. We're gonna see here in a second after we get down to it. My guess is the Tigris is not working properly and is not boosting the voltage up that it's supposed to, but we'll find out here shortly if that's the case. So how a Tigris normally should work is whenever you plug in the charging cable, it'll take that voltage and it'll move it over to VCC main and it'll boost that VCC main voltage up to charge the battery. If it's not boosting that voltage, that voltage will stay at battery level and we will get false charging. If it is not boosting, it can be either the chip which does the switching. We belong to a restaurant that was plugged in 24 7 playing music. I bet that's why it fucked up. I bet the the, the audio I see burned up in the the charge port stuff probably because they were running it through some type of iPod connector or something and old power surge hit it or something and fucked it up that would be my guess it makes sense why the audio I see was burn all the hill alright so the guesses seem to be pretty accurate in chat. Everybody is thinking Tigris. I'm thinking Tigris. Micah thinks Tigris, but leaning towards Battery Gate for Tigris is bad. Which, that's a really good possibility. If the gate's not working, uh, we could have an issue there. Because that would mean the battery wouldn't charge, even though it says it's supposed to be. Alright, so we got our board out. Let's move our non vital parts out of the way. I need to change tweezers. These are my shitty take apart tweezers. So we're going to look for any obvious signs to start with. Hey, Paul. Man, you're. <laughs> You won't stop giving me money back. Stop it. I appreciate the donations, though, man. How are you feeling? I felt like shit last night. Uh, I had enough pain in my mouth that uh, I took a Xanax from my uh, my girlfriend's mom that she has for back pain, and it barely did anything to it. I still felt it all night. It was still pretty uh, miserable. Alright, so I'm looking around TriStar for any obvious visual damage to it. Looks okay. The gate looks fine. And TriStar looks fine. Or not TriStar, Tiger, excuse me. Alright, so another thing I want to check. There is a, a uh, coil under here that could be bad. Uh, we need to see first off if uh, we're getting boost. So I need to get a 6S charging port. I can actually use the chassis here to test this. So I'm going to see if we're at least getting a boosted voltage here on VCC main. Some oxymore. <laughs> uh, hopefully tomorrow I won't have any more pain after they cut out that tooth. 
I had a tooth that, that got chipped when my wisdom teeth came in. And the, the dentist looked at it and he said that it was okay. But evidently not because it was fucking hurting bad. I guess he just didn't want to deal with it. Alright, let's see what voltage we're getting here. Now we're getting 4.2 volts. And we're getting our 5 volts in from VCC main. Let's hook up our batteria. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Cha cha cha. Now I need to find a bat VCC line for the battery line. So I'm going to open up. Man, it's choppy today. I don't know why it's so choppy. Have Micah pull my teeth? No, I'm good. We can do that. Or is orange pliers? <laughs> Somebody told me last night I need to just go in there and pull, or Tim told me to pull them out. Let who pull them out? Tim told me to let you pull my teeth out. Oh, good. Yeah. Where's the orange tool kit? I got the orange tool kit, but the orange pliers. We can get it. I'm good. My mom was having, um, it had something going on with it. Like, oh yeah, one of her teeth was like really sharp and was cutting her tongue. So my dad went in there with this cheap arm of freight dremel and <laughs> ground it down. <laughs> <laughs> this is backyard dentistry. <laughs> Yeah. Chris, Paul's a pretty awesome guy. I think our external took a shit. Yeah, I don't think tying a weight to it's gonna pull it out. It's in there pretty good. I don't. Yeah, I know. That's why we need Lawrence pliers. Right there, they are. I'm not doing it. I can see them there. No, you can fuck right off. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, pull it out, and all you have to do is go to the hospital and get some Bat VCC. We well, should fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Bat VCC comes in right here. Just go in there with your <laughs> gushing blood everywhere. <laughs> so, Micah could be right. We're getting 4.2 volts solid on VCC main, which is normal. That's what Tigers is supposed to boost to. But on our bats VCC side, I'm getting 3.657 volts and it's not going up. And my amp draw right now is 0.04. Okay. So gate. we're gonna replace we're gonna pull that gate and jump it and see if it'll charge. Jump the gate. Mike is a better technician than all of us. Mike, are you so good? I'm so good. <laughs> I'm not good with the external hard drives, I guess, because, like I said, this one, I think, took a shit on us. I'm trying to find the box, see if we had a warranty or something. Which one? The one that I got a few months back. You took a shit on us already? What's it doing? It, it sees it, but it won't let me read it or anything on either the Mac or the PC. Format I'm it. I'm scanning it now to see if, if it oh. can fix it. So Just fucking format that shit. I'll try. It sees it, but won't you read it? Yeah, won't read it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Said I, w I went out for gas with a female dentist trying to pull my molar. Woke up with a male dentist straddling me trying to pull the tooth out. <laughs> no, this phone is from uh, a guy in Tennessee. This is a iPhone 6s not charging. He also sent another iPhone. I think it's a 6 that has no power. All right, so we got our gate off. Let's figure out which lines are which. So the left three, these three right here are Bat VCC, and these four, five, these five here 
our VCC main and this top right is signal from the Tigris chip. We're going to just bypass this all together because you can. There is absolutely no need to put the gate back if you don't have to. On the iPhone 5C and uh, 5S this is the best option to do if you have no charging because the PMIC does all the gate control on the iPhone 5S so it does you no good to pull the PMIC just to get charging again when you can do that and I've tested it the battery doesn't drain any different the battery doesn't charge any different um, it, it acts normal so alright so we got battery and charger plugged in let's see what we get now there we go so now on my amp meter I'm getting one amp draw so it's bouncing around there but it should come up yeah there you go so we're getting one amp draw which is normal the phone is turning on right now it's probably trying to charge this battery the battery is completely dead yep so we're pulling almost a solid amp now so our charging issue was indeed the gate so to recap Mike was right why Micah was right <laughs> um, the reason that that the way we tested that is first things we test is TriStar activity so uh, does it if you don't remember or if you haven't been listening or don't pay attention or anything like that the way I test Tigris is disconnect the battery plug in the charger to the charging port on a known good charging port and you should see the amp draw kind of fluctuate from about 0.4 or 40 milliamps up to about 110 milliamps back and forth uh, the phone will try to boot up and then it'll turn off boot up then turn off uh, so this board was doing that so we knew TriStar was okay <coughs> uh, another way you can check TriStar is let the phone boot up and then plug it into a computer if the computer sees it TriStar is fine uh, the next thing we checked was was Tigris working so with a charger plugged in and a battery plugged in VCC main should jump up to 4.2 volts and when we metered it it was reading exactly 4.2 volts on VCC main so that told us that Tigris was properly working so we moved on to the next thing that ties Tigris and the battery together which is the battery MOSFET uh, that MOSFET turned out not to be opening like it should uh, the easiest thing to do is just pull the MOSFET and then you want to jump your bat VCC line to your VCC main line and that way when VCC is boosted up for charging the battery will charge you can replace the gate uh, there is a chance that the gate itself was not the problem that there was an issue inside of Tigris but uh, there's really no point in replacing everything like that if you can just pull a chip and drop a solder ball and be done with it uh, it just it's a lot of work for for little gain Oh, by the way, here's that audio I see off the bottom of that tri or that uh, iPad Air. It like burnt the actual corner of the chip off. <laughs> like there's a divot burnt into the chip right here where it caught fire. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Yeah, that's definitely audio I see. You can see all the uh, input output lines, the single trace lines that run out. Micah has a dragon. What? I don't know, it looks like a dragon. <laughs> Mike has a dragon in his pants. Ooh. Magic smoke was definitely released. I agree. Well, 
I've seen people complain about uh, iPhones and stuff burning up when they hook them up to amplified outputs sometimes that that do something weird to the phone. That iPad definitely had some voltage spike from something though. If it was constantly hooked up for music, my guess is that it was hooked up to a charger or some type of dock at, at some point all the well for all of the time that it, it was alive <laughs> since it was playing music and I would guess that they had some type of electrical surge that ended up causing its demise if that's the case I would tell them that they should probably not leave that hooked up does Micah have a hot air station yes he does he has a same one as, same one as me AU 852. Uh, no, he doesn't have a quick. <laughs> a what? A quick station. No, no. Because I know that's what he's going to ask. Alright, so I'm going to put this board back together real quick. And then we will move on to the next one that is no power. We have two no power iPhone 6s here, I believe. One of them, well, both are mailing. Right. What's scary is that if you use the square register system with the iPad, the iPad is locked in and plugged up all the time. Yeah, that's true. I would hope that they would have some type of voltage protection on those machines, but I guess not. I would guess though, I don't have a schematic, or ZXW doesn't tell me which pad there is hooked up. I do have a schematic for the Air 2 um, that I want to look up. Oh, there, let me open it now and view it all. Oh. Why? I don't know. Tim is grinning. I know Tim's grinning. I wasn't even going to ask that. I just didn't know if he did Microsoft. Yeah, uh, Micah has pretty much exactly the same setup that I do. He just doesn't have a camera and he doesn't, you don't have what, all the micro tweezers yet. Do you guys do a lot of PS4 HDMI repairs along with console repairs in general? Yeah, we've done quite a few PS4 uh, HDMI ports. Some of them aren't HDMI ports. Sometimes the port, well, take that back. Sometimes the port gets damaged, but it's not just the port that's damaged. We've seen quite a few after the port gets jammed back in there and the pins touch. It causes, it causes the uh, data line filters to blow. And it can also cause the HDMI encoder chip to fuck up internally. We got one in the back that's just the encoder chip. Yep. That's never been picked up. I'm even about, I'm about to say fuck it and just even, do it. Even though I asked him if I could buy, buy it off of him cheap. Or ask, the, ask him to talk to the customer. Yep. If it's here any longer, just fix it and we'll fucking say that we threw it away because it's sat here too long. Sat here too long. Should have picked it up earlier. Should have picked it up earlier, about a year ago almost. He hasn't been here. No. It's been a long time. Almost out. He doesn't have a camera yet. He does. This camera can be used to, to view Micah now. So we can rotate around. Let's see if I can get this around there. Eh, eh, eh. eh. No broke camera. Eh. Eh. So there's Micah Cam. That's his one desk. And then he's got another desk that's uh, over there. There's his microscope and his hot air station. And then his, his little preamp and shit on the floor back there. And his, his Cat 6E cable on the floor. It's Cat 5E. Cat 5E, whatever. That's yours, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, that's yours. Should we just leave it on Micah Cam? Does everybody want Micah Cam? Micah Cam. 
Everybody's staying on Micah Cam. <laughs> Paul said he doesn't want to take another vomit pill. <laughs> We'll turn it back around here so Paul doesn't die. We don't want Paul to die. We can't have Paul die. Don't die, Paul. Don't die. We like your company around here. Tim's being very mean to you. Why? He said you're ugly. We're good. I'm glad. <laughs> Mike said he's glad that you said he's ugly, Tim. His mom didn't think I was ugly. He said your mom didn't think he was ugly, though. Just remember, Tim, only you can prevent forest fires. You can't believe people let Micah in their house. Micah's very skilled at getting into people's homes. <laughs> he doesn't even ask. He just walks in. Mike has got two deaths. That's how important he is. I have one. How often does he get asked if he smoke or asked for weed? How often all do you time. get it? All the time. How often do you have weed? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Mike is packing, bro. Packing that weed. Get high every day. We gotta smoke weed every day. My bad. <laughs> That's how high you are. May or may not be all high. On a scale of one to high, I am not that high. All right, have you done an Xbox One S HDMI port? No, I haven't. The ports are for sale now, so that's good. All right, so this iPhone Six is booting up. It's pulling one amp right now. I'm going to let it finish booting up and make sure it charges. Uh, as far as the pins that I bridged, I will show you all that. Because someone asked just a second ago. So this is the 6S battery gate right here. Actually, you all may not be able to see that. Let me check. Yeah, you all can see it. The 6S battery gate is right here. So... This is Tigris right here, and this is your battery gate. If you click here, this is a signal pin. You can see it comes from Tigris. It goes through a resistor right here. Uh, but it comes from Tigris, and then this is VCC main, and this is BAT VCC. So what I did is I put a solder blob that, pit, that bridged these four pins together here, 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 and here, and that essentially bridges those together. All right, so we're at 1% and it says we're charging. I'll switch back so you all can see a little better. Not that side. So 1% and charging. It is still pulling one amp, so I'm 99.99999% sure that is fixed. So in that case, we move on. Some places in San Fran, Micah's hair is worth a fortune. They would mug him for it. Probably would. What? $99. Microsolderingsupply.net. For the repair or for just the port? Because I know the port's fairly cheap. New rubber mat? Yeah. i got to add that. Um, I'm going to do that right now, actually. Somebody reminded me this morning, and I, I meant to go and add that, and I forgot all about it. Let me uh, add that on there. Boop, 
I wonder if there's a way to dictate which window I want this to stay with. Chat. Match chain type. There we go. Now it stays on the other screen so you all can still see chat. I'll log in to my affiliate account. Huh, that's weird that he's he's got such a high price on there. Oh, the microscope camera was in the way. Sorry. Hold on. We switch back. I fix it. Let's turn off the microscope camera for now. Sorry about that. So, we'll make this full screen so it's easier to see. So this is Tigris right here. This is the battery gate. This is the control line that comes from Tigris which you can see right there and it goes to this resistor and then if you look this is bat VCC which comes from the battery this is VCC main and I placed a solder ball right there to bridge these four pins together one two three four and that essentially signs, uh, ties those two lines together so hopefully that help you out Sorry about that, with the shit being in the way. Alright, let me sign into the affiliate account and add this on. <laughs> no problem. Sorry about that, Handy. I didn't mean to block that out. There's a few things I need to add. I can't remember what all I need to add to it. Boop, boop, boop. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Oi, oi, oi. Get the link. I want the link as... Text only. Or image only. Text and image? No. I can't ever remember how to get the fucking tiny link. The web address you entered is not functioning. Loading! There it is. The tiny URL. Kippy. And we will add this into the description, which hopefully will update fairly quickly. Okay, added the mat to it. Is there anything else I needed to add while I'm on this? Uh, yes, Tigris talks to CPU. You can hate the stream if it helps. <laughs> <laughs> T 
type something? Okay. Sorry, Paul, I just saw it. Something. Oh, the UV light. That's a good idea. Forgot about that one, too. Chat is very helpful. Me, not so much. Get the link for the UV light. Okay, the light is added. Anything else that I can't remember? Uh, let's see, I can't link the stencils because they're not on there. I think I can list link my test cables. Let me see. Link your testicles. Link my testicles. Yes, can. Hey there. Hello. Can I help you? Charge for it. Oh, the Dell. Okay. Yeah. The one that I did the. Charge for it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have a good day. Let's see. So I've added the uh, the tweezer tips. I'm not sure which ones they are. I think they're like the they're whatever the smallest ones are, like T9I or something. T9I. Yeah, that's what I got. I don't even know what they are. I, I finally figured out why they weren't meeting up. So I took them apart the other day and the temperature probe has a metal shaft that kind of sticks out at the bottom.
um, little temperature probe sticks out the bottom of it, and one of them had shifted back and wasn't letting the tweezers sit all the way down in there. So I actually just clipped the end of it, and they still work fine. Uh, but now the tweezers meet up at the ends. So before they were off, and now they're even. So I was pretty stoked about that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could share. I don't even know what all is in the description. Yeah, Paul, you're a pretty awesome man. I appreciate any of the donations you've given me. I mean, you haven't had to. Alright, so our iPhone success is up to 3%. <clears throat> I'm interested to see what's going to come of this uh, healthcare bill that's going down right now. I've, uh, I just feel like Congress is just doing something to do something, that they're not actually trying to help out people. Okay, is that going to help with the pain? I know you said it started after they put that in. Hopefully that'll get rid of it. What's the uh, what's the implant for? Is it, supposed, is it supposed to reduce pain or is it supposed to help with like nerve injury or something like that? Or Yeah, I know it's delayed right now, but it's just amazing to me that like I don't know why is it such a bad idea that we try to get health insurance cheaper for everyone I, or health insurance for everyone in general it doesn't make any sense to me I understand it's expensive but we spend money on shit every year that's expensive I had a discussion with a guy the other day and I like to discuss things like that with people because, especially if they can have an argument without just being a dickhole. Uh, he was talking about, we were talking about military budget spending and stuff, and I was like, why did we need to increase it? And he was like, well, military budget increases technology that we have and <clears throat> gives people jobs and this and that. And I understand that, but why do we need to spend as much as we do? Comparative to the other countries of the world. We spend as much on our military as the next 11 highest combined. Which is pretty high. Alright, so I'm not getting any trust our response out of yeah, this phone. Most of the other armies are just mainly infantry and not tanks and That's not true. They just came out with brand new jets and... and Saudi Arabia and I think England or something this year. Oh, well, didn't they design their own shit? You act like every other country is stupid and can't design their own stuff. They can't. They go and buy buy up all their their sports cars for their police. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I agree that the military does. Okay, so we're with a known good battery. We're booting. So this phone is TriStar. I I agree that I, I my point wasn't that military spending is is. I think it's a little high. I think we need to spend quite a bit in our military because it does advance technology. But my point was, to well, him, to was that. Um, the issue that I see is people have no problem with spending that money, but when it comes to health care for everyone, which would only benefit everybody, it becomes this us versus them situation. Like, it's almost like it becomes, and almost it seems like the middle class will fight against themselves, it seems, when it comes to health care. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And I understand the fiscal side of it. I understand that the spending needs to come down. But 
how else do you get spending to come down when you're fighting against pretty much monopolies in the in pharmacy and in healthcare in general? Prices are, are pretty high as it is, and the only way to get those prices down is either you're going to have to regulate it somehow, or you're going to have to have buying power, which having socialized medicine gives you that buying power. Because when you have one pool of people, you can negotiate anything you fucking want. They kind of have to, to give a little bit. <clears throat> and the, the discussion we got onto was uh, corporation welfare is dumped, giving me money if I can need it. They made healthcare a partisan issue, so people are voting against their interests. I agree, they have made it a partisan issue, it, and it's not. Like, I, I mean, I know it, it may be greedy from a poor, poor person's standpoint, but if I was voting for somebody, I would be voting for somebody that's going to help me get health insurance that I can afford. I wouldn't be voting against myself. And that's exactly what's happened. And the crazy thing is, Kentucky's got some of the poorest cities in, in America... And they voted for Trump, which Trump promised them that he was going to give them good health coverage. Everybody was going to be covered, blah, blah, blah. But you can see that, I mean, it doesn't take much to understand that he's just a bunch of hot air. But I don't know. It, it saddens me that we have some of the poorest cities in America, in Kentucky, and yet they keep electing fucking Mitch McConnell back to fucking Congress. And it, it's the party's fault here because they don't put any up they don't put up any better options. So you're having to choose between a shit sandwich and fucking Mitch McConnell. How much is medical health care in the US? Martin, what do you mean by like how much does it cost total, or how much does the individual pay, or what? The average insurance cost, for Kentucky at least, seems to be around $400 per person. Per month. With a family of four, it's around $1,200, I think. Yes, shit sandwich and giant douche. For family of four, I think it's right around twelve hundred to sixteen hundred dollars for family of four. It's just I mean it's a lot of money. And then that like that doesn't always mean that you'll have coverage on everything and that doesn't mean that your deductible is not fucking outrageously high. See, Amy, you talk about Canada, and see, a lot of people harp on Canada, and they're like, well, people come from Canada to the U.S. to get surgeries done, and that's true, because Canada can have long wait times on certain surgeries, but that doesn't mean that all socialized medicine's that way, and that, I had that discussion with that, that older gentleman about that, he was like, well, what about Canada, they, they have some, some wait times that are so long that people come here, I was like, yeah, because Canada has some flaws, everybody likes to point to that. But nobody likes to point out the fact that some European countries have shorter waiting times that have socialized medicine. So, I mean, you can pick and choose to make anything look bad or good. It just depends on where you want to pick from. There's some, on average in Europe, there's more doctors per 100,000 people than there are in the U.S. So to say that socialized medicine kills off, doesn't, or doesn't create jobs for doctors and stuff, or makes wait times longer is, is not true. It may be in some certain situations, but it's not universally true. And then we had a discussion about the drug drug industry in the United States. Are like, I was talking about the fact that my my inhalers, the cost that I paid was like in. in Australia, I could get them for $8. In the U.S., they're $80 for the exact same one. And um, 
He's like, well, don't you want your drugs to be safe? They have to go through all this testing, yada, yada. I was like, you think that people in Australia are just like, fuck it, let's just fucking take these drugs. Who cares if they've been tested or not? Like, most of Europe and a lot of countries like Australia tend to have, strict, like, stronger uh, food and drug laws than we do. <clears throat> Doctors make less in Canada? Well, maybe so. Maybe there's a reason they make less. Maybe they make... A number that's fair based off of I think that doctors can be sued for way too much here in the United States if you don't pay yeah you don't get health insurance or if you're poor enough you can get you can get Medicaid but you have to be pretty fucking poor I don't know many people that are like fuck it I'm not gonna do anything even though that seems to be the common image that's portrayed that everyone that has government assistance is lazy fuck that does nothing. Which, again, statistically if you look at it, is 150% wrong. The majority of people aren't using government assistance and just sucking off of it, but there are some. And in the same breath, you can't sit there and complain about people gaming the system at the poor end when you have people gaming the system at the high end, too. So, If you're going to bitch about one, you better be bitching about all of them. Yeah, I I agree, Austin. I, I haven't heard of any. I mean, I'm all for making sure that your your drugs are safe that you're taking because that's obviously something that's very important. You don't want to be taking something that could kill you. But at the same time, I think it's just used as like this fear mongering tactic that somehow U.S. drugs, even though made by the same exact fucking companies, are somehow superior because they've gone through our testing, even though. Our FDA doesn't have as stringent rules as some countries do, and they don't pay anywhere near what we do for uh, certain drugs. Alright, so let's get this in focus. I'm going to take this TriStar off, and then we're going to replace it and see if our phone works again. We'll get some better tweezers to do that. Alright, so my tri-stars when they're underfilled like this on the... Pretty much any of them, I like to hold my heat there. And I like to put just a slight bit of twisting motion against it. Not very much. And whenever that solder melts, you'll feel it. It'll give, it'll give free. Alright, so it's starting to give. See how I can twist it? Now I should be able to just kind of twist it off. There you go. So see my solder melted. I kind of knocked that cap, but we can push that back into place. It's still on its pad, just kind of knocked it over to its side a little. Alright, so... Yeah, Mark, I agree that the I think that the VA system is terrible and does need to be overhauled. I think the problem is, is people take situations like that, like Obamacare has problems, uh, the VA has obvious problems too, and instead of saying, okay, the system works sometimes, but it has some flaws, let's fix them, instead of saying that, they're like, this has flaws, let's fucking get rid of it altogether. I mean, that the mentality makes no sense. I mean, it those systems aren't broken to the point that you can't fix them. It's just, it's almost like the, 
for Obamacare at least, it seems like the just the principle that everybody in the United States can have health coverage just seems to bother people for some reason. Won't <laughs> dispense anything. Alright, let's try this again. See if we can get some fluid up in this bitch. There it goes. Yay! Finally got some fluid out of it. Hey, hey there. Do you have a restroom? Uh, we don't. Um, if you go out here and then go down the main main hall all the way to the very back, then there's one back there. This hall right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, did you turn it on the tablet? Uh, I haven't, I haven't got it open yet. Mm-mm-mm, Micah. You didn't fix it. Now you're in trouble. Come on, little capacitor. Melt for me. Caps in place. If they don't come with the gasket, they don't build pressure well. Well, this one doesn't have a gasket, I don't think. I have to turn it upside down to really get it to. It gets full right now, so it should hold. It's true, nothing is free. It's subsidized. I mean, I don't think anybody's saying that it, it's free insurance. I understand where it comes from. I understand how it's paid for. I just feel like if we're going to spend tax money anyway, we might as well just have benefits that benefit the people here. But it seems like that having anything that's paid for other than our gasoline, roads, fire department, schools, mail service... Anything like that, everybody's okay with subsidies, but as soon as it comes to somebody else getting health care, it's like, oh, you're just a freeloader. Oh, you want food, you freeloader? Like, get the fuck over yourself. I, I wish that everybody for one day, or more than a day, I wish everybody had to live in the shittiest fucking conditions that some people have to live in, and then come back and say, these people don't deserve anything. Nobody complains about the things that are subsidized that they get daily. They only complain if it's something that's not subsidized that they're not getting. And then all of a sudden it's a problem. If you don't like subsidies, don't fucking fill your tank up because it's subsidized with tax tax money. If you don't like the you don't like subsidies, don't drive on the fucking road. Yeah, I already told him. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's got Wi-Fi, but it's not not pulling a very strong signal. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take a look at it. Okay. Uh, should I come back what, tomorrow or what? It'll probably be tomorrow, yeah. Okay. All right. No problem. Okay, thank you. No problem. No problem.
Uh, see, the problem with the argument is that the state should be in charge with it is exactly why we had segregation. So, you can say that the state should have the power, but states don't always have the best things in mind for their individual people. Uh, that was the argument that Betsy DeVos used about federal funding for different schools that don't provide uh, coverage for disabled students. I mean, who, who gives a shit if the state has the power if they're just going to sit there and use majority rule to control everything? That's why the federal government's there, so they can... I mean, the federal government's supposed to take over where, where states don't have any... Well, states are supposed to take over where the federal government has no jurisdiction, but the states have been in, known in the past to pass things that aren't exactly nice. I mean, there's a reason we had to amend our constitution to keep states from having slavery. So, I mean, the whole go back to let the states control it is 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 fine and dandy if they're actually doing their job, but uh, if you leave it up to my state, which is now in control by a governor that's a piece of shit, a congressman that's a piece of shit, and pretty much overall just a bunch of douchebags, I'd rather not let them be up in, in control of it. We have Mitch McConnell and fucking uh, Matt Bevins. If you haven't heard about Matt Bevins or ever seen Matt Bevins, you should look him up because he's a complete dickhole. I would much rather not leave those decisions up to my fucking representatives. And people are like, well, then get out and vote if you don't like it. Well, the problem is, is you're voting against a bunch of fucking idiots that are all about ideology of their party and less about what the actual policy is. So they just vote whatever they fuck. All them damn gays are going to get married. I better not vote for them fucking Democrats. Don't want them gays getting married. So I replaced the TriStar. Did I put TriStar on the right way? I put it on wrong earlier today. Go to another state that works for you. So that's really a stupid argument. Like, so you're saying if you don't like the state you're in, move? What about people that don't have money and can't move? Why would I want to travel hundreds of miles away and move my entire life just because my politicians are a piece of shit? It's just, that's really just a stupid argument. There should be no reason you should have to move your entire family because you don't agree with the way that one person's controlling your entire life. That's why we're supposed to have government and we're supposed to be able to to control the uh, people that are in power, but it seems like majority of the people in power in my state are concerned about that money they get from them donations. Alright, so TriStar is still not talking, so I'm going to try a different TriStar since that one was a dud, evidently. We'll pull that one off and try a different one. I just feel like there's a, yeah, I feel like politicians don't work for their constituents. They work for their own personal views, their own personal gain. Matt Bevins is a great example of that. He's one person that, that really harps against subsidies and helping out with Medicare and everybody paying blah, 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 but... When it came time when his family had problems with their fucking business up in Pennsylvania or something, wherever the fuck it is, he was all about getting those fucking state subsidies to help get his business back on track. But now he's in Kentucky and he's all against them. Bunch of fucking hypocritical bullshit. And then the excuse is always, well, if they're there, I might as well use them. I don't fucking bitch about it then. Leave it alone. If it's such such a appalling thing to you, why are you using them? Let's 
just really fucking annoying to me. It, it's almost like it's almost like people that have just a little bit of money just feel like they they can now look down upon anybody else that doesn't. Try a second try star here. The one thing that I've noticed with people, and especially with people that are anti like any type of help or any type of subsidy or anything like that, when when the time comes and it actually affects their lives, that's when all of a sudden their minds change. They're all of a sudden okay with it. Like you'll see a lot of people that that get up and talk about that they'll be like well i was i was a staunch republican and i was against obamacare because obamacare was terrible but then my wife or somebody myself or my, my child or whatever got sick and if we didn't have that coverage they would have died and then all of a sudden it matters to them because it actually affects them and that's where i think that the united states kind of actually it lacks empathy like, if you can't put yourself in somebody else's shoes without actually having to be in their shoes, I think there's a problem. Ooh, let's see, charging port. Let's see if this TriStar works. Yeah, exactly. Like, people are all against something until it affects them, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, shit, I need this. You're fucking all staunch against it, can't, no, no, no. And all of a sudden everything fucking goes downhill, and you're like, oh, well, I need that. Please help me. Alright, so we still don't have any action from TriStar, so let's... Let's take a look around here and see what's going on. Let me see. There's a voltage line that the PID comes to. What temp air pressure do you use in your A52? Uh, I use 350 degrees Celsius at 45 airspeed. I don't know if that really will help you or not, but everybody's situation is going to be a little different on those settings. I think it's important to stay in touch with the news. I mean, even if you don't agree with all of it, which I don't, I think some of it's just arguing to argue. Alright, so we need... There's a line that's... comes from the charger. There it is, TriStar pin. So, this capacitor right here, there's a line that comes off this battery <coughs> or USB gate. It's like a sense gate, so I need to see if that is working or not. Because right now I'm not getting anything, which means that TriStar is not seeing the C or is not seeing the the USB being plugged in for some reason. Alright, so the, that line is working, so that's working. What else is there? Ah, uh, yeah, PS4 stuff, you have to use much higher heat. Uh, there's a lot more... Um, there's a lot more ground plane in the PS4 board. Especially MacBooks are the same way. You have to use more heat on MacBooks also. Anything that's got a substantial ground pin or ground line, like the plane and the board, the more you have to heat up, the more it's going to take to to get it off. So, like the PS4 is made to be a giant ground heatsink because it has to. Um, they don't have very good cooling through the fan setup, so they use the board to displace a lot of the heat. 
all right so I'm going down the connector here to see if there's something I'm missing I know there is a USB detect line. I think it goes to Tigris. But I'm not sure where it is. I'm trying to find it right now. Tigris V bus detect. There it is. Where's that go? I think that goes to CPU. Yeah, it does. So it's not that. Huh. Let me try a different cable here just to make sure. I'm doing I'm using a different charging port right now that I know is good. I'm not booting on, not charging. It's not Tigris is not sensing the charger like it should. I'm fairly sure certain it'll boot again. Uh I think Tigris honestly does the uh the boot portion of it. Yeah, I'm still not getting any any activity from the from TriStar. So there should be some activity from TriStar there. Like it tries to boot. Let me check around here. Everything looks okay there. Let's check up here. I did see a slight spill that was in here. You can see the residue here that's on the back of the board. Right there too, around the holes. I'm trying to see if there's maybe anything that might be causing this. That all looks good. I didn't see anything up here that looks crazy out of place. <sighs> what the fuck is going on here? Not bragging, but I've been all over the world to the worst third world countries, Europe and the Middle East. We live in a bubble here. Oh, I agree. I think it is much worse. I, I don't think that the U.S. is necessarily hard. I just feel like in the situation that we're in, with as much wealth as our country has, that we should be able to... We should be able to to help our people a lot more. Let's see if our bypass cap is shorted. No, it's good. All that's good. Aha! So we have a problem. It's with Tigris. So these caps here should not be shorted on the Tigris output. Uh, this is like a, it's kind of like a an AC decoupling, I think, line for Tigris that, that comes off of the, uh, whenever you plug in the charger, whenever it does the boosting. Uh, it creates an AC waveform when it does the boosting because it's pulsing uh, the voltage on and off. Well, not really an AC waveform, but it, it creates an AC, an alternating current back and forth. So these caps should not be shorted. So let's see, let's take those caps off and see if one of these is bad. I think Jessa actually had one that was like this not too long ago. Yeah, get another set of tweezers. I've bent the piss out of these. Come on, baby. Whoop. Come on, Mr. Cap. You gotta stay with us. Alright, let's see if we still have a short there. Okay, so we still have a short. Let's take our other cap off. This could be Tigris that's bad, which 
would make sense. It could be pulling some signal line down, which tells TriStar that something's not all right, which then tells the phone not to charge. Okay. So we got both caps off. Let's test again. Alright, so that second cap is shorted. So now we don't have a short. So let's test that cap. Yep, there you go. So that capacitor is bad. It's dead short across its leads. The other cap is okay. So we'll go ahead and put the other cap back on that is good. This cap was fine and we'll snag a cap off of another board. So Jessa, I know she had a video with one doing exactly this, like she had a no charge situation and she replaced TriStar a few times and then also found this same short. So it's cool that we got to see that one here. I've seen this short only a few times. Normally though it's accompanied by liquid damage. Uh, I don't. I can't say I've seen one just from a bad cap, but obviously that's completely possible. Okay. So that cap's on. Let's snag one from another board. Pick up Tigris. Replace all of it. I don't think Tigris is bad. I mean, our short was was obviously the cap. I don't see any signs of liquid damage around Tigris, so I don't I don't believe it's the issue. So we got our donor board here. Let's snag us a capacitor. We put a little bit of flux down. For small SMD capstone resistors, okay. For what? Okay, for what? What's a good diode reading on CPU and GPU? Uh, GPU on an iPhone 6S is very low. It's like 0 .02 or something like that. Uh, CPU should be like 0 .8 or so, somewhere in there, I think. They're fairly low. Uh, if you give me a second, I got a board here. I'll test real quick. I can let you know what, what I've got. I did discover something interesting today I want to show you all. I'm not sure what negative or positive effects it would have, but it was very interesting to me because I did it as a test and surprisingly it worked. It has to do with iPhone 6 and touch issues. Not really touch issues, but the touch I sees. Alright, so those are soldered on. Let's clean up our mess here and let's see if we get charging. Alright, so clean that up. Let's see what it does now. Still not doing anything. Answering it. Oh. Yeah. Huh. 
We're still not doing anything here. The six? Yeah, can you take it home with you so you can pick it up? Yeah. Yeah, he said he'd take it home. He said he'll be there around 8 o'clock, so is that okay? Yeah, I'll be there. He said, yeah, he'll be there. No problem. Bye. Okay, so we don't have a short on the PMID lawn now. We still don't have any Tigris or Tristar activity. Makes me wonder if I'm gonna have to replace the Tristar again. Tristars seem to be a little heat sensitive. So, still got nothing. So, I'm kind of debating, do I want to go ahead and replace Tigris? Or do I want to dick with... Let's do Tigris. Maybe Tigris isn't boosting and that's why we're not getting any amp draw. Because the amp draw that comes from TriStar is because Tigris boosts up the voltage. Because it sees that, that uh, signal. So let's go ahead and replace Tigris just to roll that one out. Actually, I want to see if my voltage is making it to VCC main. That would be a dead giveaway of what Tigris is doing. The flux shouldn't be conductive, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, so let's see here. All right, so this one is VCC main with our charger plugged in. On VCC main, we are getting nothing. So yeah, we're getting no amp draw whatsoever. Let's see what bat VCC. Well, no, that should be that should be everything from the charger. Okay, so yeah, let's replace let's replace Tigers. We definitely have some weird shit going on there because we should have voltage coming off of uh, VCC main when the USB is present. That short on this line could very well burn up Tigris internally. Okay. Tigris is off. Let's check orientation. Yep, so it's readable. I haven't seen Jason stream in a while. I've seen that he's been uploading a lot of videos, but no streams. I feel like editing videos just takes too much time, so I just stream everything. Thank you, David.
Here, let's put on a new tigress. Make sure we have the right one. There are a couple variations of it. This should be a AB0 or B0, I mean. The AB0 is the 6S. So if you flip this over, that is SN2400B0. This one is SN2400B0. So we'll place our chip into place. Now let's reflow it. Jason has some new equipment. What did he get? Here you go, Paul. I'll make you a uh, moderator. You, you deserve it. That way you can post links away. Uh, hold on, uh, I'll read your question about the cloning hard drive stuff. As far as cloning drives, we have a little dock that we use and then we use uh, software with them. We use a, a Cronus True image. No problem, Paul. Yeah, I, I, Neil, a lot of people don't like the long streams, but what can you do? This is my daily work. This is, you see exactly what I do daily, so. Unfortunately, it's not a movie. It's not edited. It's, this is life. This is what I do every day. I know it's not glamorous. All right, so let's test and see. Yay! So that's what it was. We were not getting any power draw from Tigris. So Tigris was our problem the whole time. So now we're pulling 0 0.08 to 0 0.15. It's jumping around, blah, blah, blah. So now, in theory, if we hook up a battery, we should see about one amp draw. And this should work. Yeah, that's what I've got. I've got a Logitech camera also. That's what this one is right here. The one that shows you everything down here. I'm actually gonna get a second one. All right, so now when we plug in our battery, we now pull one amp. Look at there, 0.92 milliamps, which is 920 milliamps, which on the meter appears it's one amp. So, we got that one figured out. So let's put her back together here and see if we can check and make sure it's fully working. This one was a uh, no power, which is now a worky, worky, worky. Uh, I don't think I have this amp meter listed on there. Honestly, to be honest, uh, we haven't had the greatest luck out of these. This one just happens to work for a long time. As I say that, I unplug it. Uh, these work for quite a long time, but we've had some that have been duds. So I don't know if I necessarily recommend these or not. Um, they definitely help the best tool it is a really good tool but they do make other amp meters i may link it in there but um i don't know I, it just i've had mixed results with them so I, i'm not going to sit there and say they're the best that you can buy because they're they're not obviously 
it's just what has worked for me. I've had this one for a year now at least, and it's still going strong, but we have some here that we, as soon as we got them out of the box, they were fucked up, so. So I'd say when you get a good one, you get a good one. When you get a bad one, you get a shitty one. If that helps at all. <laughs> I don't know if it does or not. Get my big meat sticks down here on camera so y'all can see me soldering these shields back on. The exciting, glamorous parts of this repair. Putting shields back on and putting screws in. Shields on. Alright, we got one more after this, and then I think we're going to be done unless something else walks through the door. I've got one other one that is a no power. Um, I'll have to figure out. They, it's been previously worked on. And was sent to me because I couldn't figure out what was going on with it. So I'm going to be the guinea pig and try to figure it out. Tim, where are you from? Every 10 to 30 minutes, yeah. I'm glad that chat is more chatty. <laughs> Having more people in chat really, I think, helps pass the time and it makes it more interesting. Plus, you all can ask questions and stuff. I try to be as accommodating as I can. So to kind of recap on this phone so you all know what was done and, and why, I, why I did what I did. So we checked TriStar activity and I wasn't getting any activity on the meter. Um, I should have checked to see if the phone said it was charging though because that would have given me a, a giveaway that Tiger, or TriStar was actually working. Um, I didn't let it boot up all the way because I kind of assumed which assuming obviously doesn't work out all the time. Uh, Tristar was probably okay on this phone. The, the problem was actually Tigris the entire time. So after we rolled out Tristar by replacing it a couple times, uh, well twice, I realized that it still wasn't pulling any amperage and we checked the PMID line on Tigris which was showing us that we had a short. So we found the short, which was on the capacitor. Removed that capacitor, tried to do it again, and still had no amp, no amp draw. So replacing Tigris, we realized that, well, we refor before we replaced it, we tested to see if VCC main voltage was coming up with the presence of the charger, which it was not. 
and that BCC main voltage is made by Tigris whenever the charger is placed in in the uh, socket so we knew Tigris wasn't doing its job so we replaced Tigris and voila it was Tigris boring me to death I mean I can be boring at times I'm sure I'm not the most entertaining person I don't I don't do dance I don't sing a Chris dance on the stream. If I was a if I was a woman in a bikini doing board work, I'd probably get a million viewers. Chris wants tits. I don't want tits. YouTube wants tits. What? The lowest common denominator of YouTube wants tits on stream. Ninety nine point nine percent of YouTube viewers vote tits. That's probably true. <laughs> I did all my video editing in Adobe Premiere. D1 Premiere takes up a lot of hard drive. 64 terabytes. That's a fair amount of video. I've never been much for video editing. I don't have that creative bug when it comes to video editing. Things always look cooler in my head than they actually are. I sit down to do something like, eh, that's not as cool as I thought it was going to be. So, I figured sticking to live streams for me was probably the best idea. Plus, I don't have to store any footage, so it's all stored by YouTube for me. What ads are they playing on mine now? They were playing Batteries Plus, are they still playing Batteries Plus on there? I'm real, makes up for the tits. <laughs> I have real tits. Does that count? Alright, so let's close the six up. And then we're going to test it and see if it is indeed charging. Which I know it is, but... I always like to make sure I can put them back together and get them to turn on. Then I feel complete. Alright, so we'll plug this in. Alright, so we're pulling one amp. And we have a charging logo. Yay! So we'll let that charge. And we'll move on to our next phone. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And, and that's honestly, like, I think Lewis talked about it. Like, people complained about, well, there's been a few people that have talked about it, but people complained about the fact that YouTube was was monitoring, like, family-friendly content and blah, blah, blah. And, like, who, why, like, I understand some people make a living off of YouTube and stuff, but why are you bitching about it? They literally do free hosting, and they're giving you pretty much free money. I mean, it's money that you wouldn't have seen anyway. Yay, water damage. Uh, Micah, can you run that through the ultrasonic? Uh, Just uh, hit the... Hit all the buttons, okay. Hit the start button and then hit sweep. Start sweep. Start, then sweep. All right, let's read the note on this one before we keep going here. It's fucking crazy hot. Leave the lid off, too. All right. Put the board in. iPhone 6 was exposed to lake water. Prior to repair, phone was disassembled. Hit, sweep? hit Hit start first. And start then start at, okay, start. And then sweep. Come on. And then sweep. There we go. Power is not introduced to the device until 20 after 20 hours after drying. After a period drive, reassemble the attempted to power on. Device was unsuccessful. Alright, so let's take all these fancy dancy shields off. Hopefully it's this cap right up here at the top and we're done. Oh, it could be. It looks a little sketch up here. 
a little sketch. Let's see where we have shorts, because I know we have shorts. VCC main for sure, I'm guessing. Yep, VCC has a partial short. That sucks. Let's actually remove the covers, like you're supposed to. Well, we got corrosion all over the audio I see, so that's a possibility for VCC main. We got some corrosion by PMIC. We got a corroded capacitor down here. Alright, so let's take all the shields off and start our search for the problem. Let's look at the front side here. This looks fairly decent. Nothing obviously fucked up here. But we're still going to pull our shields because you have to if you're going to clean it anyway. Let's check under CPU shield. We got a little corrosion around the backlight circuit. Coil looks okay. Diode honestly looks like it's probably fine too. Just a little surface corrosion there. We can probably get rid of that. We got corrosion around the uh, chestnut chip. Corrosion around Mesa. Or no, that's strobe. That's Mesa. We have some around Mesa also. So Mesa, Chestnut, Backlight, Strobe, uh, Audio IC, um, possibly, I doubt it's under PMIC, seeing how minimal there is here. We got a little corrosion there, but nothing crazy. Let's pull our bottom shield. shields off. Let's take a look at it. Alright, so we got corrosion on BCC main here. The uh, baseband PMIC. Tigris has some. Tristar has some. Audio IC has some. That's the amplifier. Uh, not sure. I can't remember what this one is offhand, but that's a VCC main cap also. Some corrosion there. This is why drying out phones and letting them sit there does not mean that they're clean. Nor does it mean that they will work again. More corrosion. So let's take our tip off and we're going to go and take off base bands since there is a fair amount of corrosion on the other side at the bottom. We can only assume that base band side also has corrosion on the other side. So I'm going to mount this up into the vise and then we're going to separate the bottom shield as quickly as we can not to burn up everything down there. Alright, I'm at 350. I'm just going to crank my heat or my airspeed up. see if I can get this camera in a little closer so you can kind of see that all right so I'm gonna grab down here at the bottom corner just barely sticking in and I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up their sticker just got mutilated sorry 
if you all needed that. So I heat this bottom shield. Okay, it's starting to come up. Okay, I'm gonna get under it a little bit more. Alright, shields <laughs> off. Let's take a look at the board down here. All right, so we got some corrosion there around these components. Corrosion around the switching IC, which can cause searching issues. Baseband area looks fairly okay. Maybe a light corrosion here and there. All right, so go ahead and pull that and we'll clean it, Micah. Time to do a little scrub a dub dubbing on this one and knock off some of our major corrosion spots here. We'll kick our airspeed back down. We need to put our nozzle back on, but we'll do that in a minute. Alright, so what I like to do is just go in and clean up any large corrosion areas that we can scrub. We could very well have a short just due to something that we can scrub off. Uh, in this case, the, I'm going to lift the audio IC because I'm 90% certain it's got corrosion under it. Uh, same with the baseband PMIC, it's probably going to come off. Uh, ti Tigris might have some corrosion under it, I'm not sure. Uh, Audio IC usually gets some nastiness under it also. A lot of these chips I can pick them up, see if there's anything under them, and set them right back down if there's not. Now let's clean up recursion down here. Okay, and then up here at the top, we want to clean this up too. C5202. Uh, Amy, it looks a little shitty, so we're gonna we're gonna remove it. But I don't think that it's the issue, to be honest. I think we have a short under one of these chips. we'll find out here shortly all right so we've cleaned all that up let's check our VCC main diode reading it should be about 320 and it is currently 0 0.0665 so that is far too low So, let's go over here to, yeah, no, there's actually some in there, in the cabinet, bottom, yep, right in there somewhere. Uh, let's pull up our let's pull up our schematic here uh, we want iPhone 6 we're already on it sweet all right so first things first we're gonna go up here and we're gonna see where VCC main goes so VCC main goes to an area that we had corrosion here we have a little discoloration corrosion here I'll go ahead and knock the cap off just to make sure 
I don't think that that cap is the issue, but you never know. So might as well get rid of it. So let's recheck. Uh, point 0.1, so it's still not close. It needs to be point 0.32. So let's pull our audio IC off. Uh, let's switch you to the microscope camera here so you all can see it. Make it a little bit bigger. So you all can kind of see what's going on there. Alright, so I'm going to clear out. Well, there's our phone that had the charging problems. It's now turning on. Or the no power issues. Uh, let's see here. Let's heat this up a little bit and clean out this underfill here. Okay. Underfill around the audio IC is cleaned up. Now time to take your audio IC off. I put my tip on now. All right, got a tip on. Take our audio IC off the board here. So we definitely had some corrosion here in the top section where the VCC main line is. So let's go ahead and clean that up and make sure that we remove any possible corrosion that could be causing issues. So that's cleaned up. Let's get our enough suction. I have to like turn it over and let it bleed out some and then it'll... There it goes. Then it gets enough suction. Alright. So let's clean that area up. Let's see what VCC main is now. 0.192. So it's come up. It's almost 0.2 volts. Just tell me. For what? Um, what was your name again? New Thermocord. It said it was yesterday. Working on it right now. It's working on it right now. Yep. 
Are they wanting this device to work or just wanting data? Are, are they wanting the device to work or are they just wanting data? Uh, just retrieving data is easy. I mean, I, I can back up the data once I get it to turn on. Once he gets it to turn on, he'll back up the data either way. Is the pin or is the uh, passcode with us? Okay. Did, did did you send us the passcode and everything with it? Okay. Let me get some of the out. Okay, so baseband doesn't look bad. We do have a few caps around here that look like shit though. So I'm gonna put the baseband PMIC back on. This is the audio IC. As you can see, it had some corrosion under it. We'll throw that one in the trash. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see which caps are. Okay, so this one's VCC main here. This one's VCC main. Let's take these two off. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Uh, okay, and you said you want to put the passcode? Okay. All right, I'll pass it on to Chris. All right, not a problem. Bye. Okay. So just go ahead and remove all these ugly caps. I don't want them here. This passcode. Alright. Okay, this is VCC main here also. Take that off. Alright, let's see what VCC main is at. Okay, so it's still low. Alright, so let's uh let me see if I can see under tigers here. Under tigers looks okay. I can see down under at an angle. Kinda. Yeah, I don't see any corrosion there. Alright, so I'm gonna kinda focus up here now since we saw a fair bit of corrosion and stuff up here on the top. Let's check our uh, backlight output line. I want to make sure that it's okay first. Backlight output looks a little low. Between about 0.3, which normally it's about 0.5. That also could be from VCC main too, but <clears throat> so let's go to the front side of the board and let's focus in this area since we have VCC main on multiple of these parts. Uh, this cap here can be VCC main short. The backlight or the flash driver, the Mesa chip, or the uh, chestnut chip could all be problems. So let's remove those one by one and see what we have. I'm going to start with the, the flash driver. It had quite a bit of corrosion around it. And it's not necessarily vital for anything on the phone. At least not for functionality.
Oh yeah. Quite a bit of corrosion under that chip. So let's clean that out. Actually, have a. Oh, it's not missing. I have a really burnt pad, though. Thought it was missing for a second, but it's still there. Just highly corroded. Which line is that? That happens to be our VCC sit. The VCC main line, actually, the one that is highly burnt there under that. So let's check now and see what our VCC main is. Alright, now it's up to 0.23 and climbing. We're going to let the board cool off some and see where we get to there. Alright, so let's check. VCC main diode reading is 0.256 and rise 26 and rising. All right, so it's leveled off about 0.26. So that's still not high enough. We need to be up over three to be normal. So we continue on. We will remove Mesa and then Chestnut. Since these actually we'll remove the Mesa cap here first. Since that little guy was messed up. Okay, so after after heating up right there, we now have a 100% short to ground. So that tells me that possibly Mesa here is the source of our issues, or even uh, or even chestnut. So putting heat in this area ended up taking the VCC main line to a complete short. Yeah, so it is now a 100% short. So let's go ahead and take off these chips here. We'll start with Mesa and then do Chestnut. So it doesn't look like it was Mesa. I don't see anything under there that screams, hey, I'm the problem. 
I do see problems under chestnut though. So chestnut has corrosion under it. So let's clean up under chestnut. I may be able to drop the Mesa boost chip right back on without too much fuss. Let's make sure where pin 1 is on it. Pin 1 is bottom right, so that's correct orientation. Let me check and see if our... Oh, it's got a little bit of corrosion under it. Let me scrub that down real quick. Okay, so it sits like that. Let me check my VCC main line and see where we're sitting now as far as resistance goes to ground. Alright, so we're up to 0.3 and climbing, so that's normal. So our voltages are back to normal. Let's put this uh, Mesa Boost chip back on and see if it stays normal. If it doesn't, we know that that chip is bad internally. I don't think that this is going to be our problem, though. I have a feeling that Chestnut was the main culprit there. Okay, this should be in place now. So let's see. I'm gonna cool this off, clean up the area a little bit, get rid of some of this flux buildup. All right, and now let's test. Our diode reading to VCC main. Let's see here. Diode reading on VCC main is now 2.66 and climbing. Let's let it cool off a little more. I want to make sure that it's correct. All right, so let's recheck that. All right, 0.314. So we're now at an acceptable level for VCC main. So now let's put chestnut back on, put a new backlight or new strobe driver, aka flash driver. Uh, then we need to put a new audio IC on and we need to replace any of these ugly looking caps. We need to replace B 
the base band, well the base band PMIC looked okay. I probably need to reball it though because I think I kind of drug some solder on it. Replace those caps. We'll need to address the audio IC in these caps down here. And that cap there and I think we'll be okay. First though, I do want to get it to turn on. So we do not need the baseband shit and we don't need the audio stuff to, to get it to turn on to back it up. So that's going to be our first objective. So let's grab a chestnut chip. Chris, 7 o'clock. Micah, you would. I would. It's dead in here. You're dead in here. You're, you're, you're dying. You're dead to me. Dying, Chris. All right, hold on. What all did you not work on today? I didn't work on an iPhone 6S plus charge port. I definitely didn't put some brackets and screws into an iPhone 6 plus for there. Uh, I kind of didn't restore and back up the uh, HP desktop. And then I'll never get done with the MacBook that I installed the SSD on, restored it, and back it up. Is it done yet? It's done. Okay. I won't give them a call in the morning. Is that all you did? Yeah. Um, 45. If we don't have it in there, I got change on me. Chestnuts on. Did you take that iPad apart yet or no? Mm, I'll take it apart first. Okay. You got five on you? No, I'm probably good to get it. I'm gonna lie. Yeah. Thanks, sir. No problem. See you tomorrow. Alright, man. Kind of. See you tomorrow, too. What time's your uh, appointment tomorrow? Noon. Noon, okay. I don't know if I'll be back or not. Okay. Alright. Depends on how my face feels, I guess, after they get done cutting on it. I'll be here in the morning. and turn the off. Yeah. Right, Later. Am I scared of the dentist? No. I'm scared of my eye fucking itching all the hell. No, I've had... <clears throat> I've had fillings on teeth and stuff. I had my wisdom teeth cut out. I don't really mind the dentist. My uncle's a dentist, actually. He doesn't live very close, though, so I can't go to him. Wish he would do it. He was closer, though. I would go to him, because then I get that family discount, and all I'm saying. Alright, so. If we've done this correctly, and there's no other fucking shorts, this phone should turn on. 
in theory. So this phone is charged up to like 20 something percent now. So those two are done. Let's see y'all. Let's see if our phone will boot. iPhone 6. That's good. Ground pad just fucking lifted off of this one. Good job, ground. Good job on not, not being soldered. The only thing I really don't... And I've never had to, but I don't want to go under anesthesia. I've been... All my dentistry work is done under local anesthetic. It's never done under full gas knock me out. I don't like going under anesthesia for simple shit that they can knock the pain out with. With some pain meds or some Novocaine. I guess some people don't like that feeling. Like the feeling you get with Novocaine. Like your jaw being all fucking swollen and shit. But... I don't like going under completely because you can have some serious problems with... Alright, so we got a fucking... 100% short as soon as we fucking turn her on here. Why are we getting this short? Is it because of my cables? Could very well be because of my cables. They're looking a little ratty. Let's try that again. Alright, so no short right now. Are we getting anything? Any logo? Nothing? Maybe? Maybe something? I can't see anything. And the amp draw it's giving me is not normal. It's like a constant point one which is not what I consider to be normal booting voltage yeah so something's not right let me see if I hook up a battery if there's any difference I think it's about time for new cables. I think those cables about bit the dust. I think I ordered a new set. I'm just waiting on them to come in. Can't remember if I ordered them or not. I know I looked at them. Okay, so I got nothing. Let's see if we got any heat anywhere. You gonna have the microscope, Paul? I don't feel any like overabundance of heat anywhere. Let's check our uh, let's check our 1v8 line because we did have corrosion on the audio I see, which the 1v8 line is right right in here on one of these caps. So I do want to check that real quick. Well, shit, we got a bridge right there. I wonder what that is. Alright, so let's go over here to the audio IC. What are you two fuckers? Ground and something for codec. I don't think that would prevent booting. I don't even think that that would cause any problems since I think that's an output. But we'll go ahead and separate those two. Because they're not supposed to be connected. HP does not suck. I'm using the HP Z book right now and streaming this. This is my main computer. 
is also the computer that I game on. It has no problems whatsoever. It actually runs pretty well. The only thing I can say about the gaming setup is since it's running through Thunderbolt, I do get some some screen tear every now and then due to the low refresh rate speed because of the uh, the delay I'm sure that comes from the PCI but other than that it's pretty good alright so let's look for shorts okay those are all good This is GPU. GPU looks okay. Let's check out NAND. There we go. So we got a problem with one of our NAND voltages. So I'm getting 29 ohms. So let's see what that is. It's probably NAND 3 volt line, if I was guessing. Uh, let's see. Which one of you fuckers is that? It's this one here. Oh, it's a 1V8 line. Well, that makes sense. So that's what I was guessing earlier, 1V8. So we need to see where our 1V8 goes. Who all could be affected by this? Alright, so Mason, which is in the area of some of the corrosion that we had, is a possibility. Uh, backlight driver, which we had some corrosion here, is a possibility. Let's see, I didn't see anything related down here, no. So, let's see here. Should we pull Mason? Would Mason be your best bet? Uh, this ball on the outer edge looks a little weird. Let's pull Mason just to see. Since Mason was close to some of the corrosion, wasn't necessarily completely in it, but it was uh, close enough to the fire it could have gotten burned. So let's go ahead and take Mason off and see what he's partying with underneath. Somebody thinks it's NAND. I don't think it's NAND. It could be a NAND uh, cap. But NAND is underfilled. That it doubtful that it failed internally. So let's remove old Mason since he was near the corrosion. Well, I don't see anything there, so I don't think that was our problem. I think we accused him, and it, we weren't accusing the right person. No, it looks way too clean. Let's look at the underside of it. Uh, that's underfill. That's possibly underfill maybe something else nothing looks bad enough under here to to say hey it's it's mason for sure could have been but doubtful I'll tell you one thing mason on the iphone 6 has a lot more nc pads and they come up extremely easy you don't have to do shit to them uh, i am interested just to around the audio I see if there's anything around it that could cause it the only thing is that cap but that cap is encapsulated in underfill I don't think that that cap would be the problem 
Uh, it was loose though. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. Loose cap usually means something. It could have floated from the heat, but we'll get rid of it just in case. Alright, let's retest 1v8 line. Yeah, it's still shorted. Alright, so let's check the front here. These all look good as far as resistors go. I don't think the backlight driver would have been the cause. It could be, but since it's underfilled, I don't I don't know that it can necessarily get any damage done to it. Uh, all the components here are underfilled. Let's check up here. Everything here looks okay. It's underfilled. I don't see any corrosion there. So I'm going to focus on the back side. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure there's nothing else out on the end here. No. There's one over here, the one V8 line for the LCM, but it looks okay. Let's check the LCD real quick. See if it had any obvious damage. It has some slight corrosion there. Now this has been reflowed. So somebody's already worked on these. Huh. So that makes me wonder what was done here. Mmm. Makes me wonder. I don't I don't like when people clean stuff because now I can't tell what has and hasn't been done. Alright, let's check the front some more. Chris already found a mistake in my iPhone battery tester board, but not critical. Only affects the 5S and 5C. Well, good thing those boards are heading to the wayside more so. Alright, so let's look down there. Nothing. Let's look up under the edges here. Any obvious damage? I don't see anything there. Everything looks good down in there. Alright, so let's go towards the bottom of the board here. Is there anything on 1B8 down here? No. Nope. Alright, so let's start picking off NAND. Uh, NAND caps and see what we get. So first things first, let's see if anybody looks weird. I like to look at them and kind of see if there's any kind of obvious discoloration. These down here and these over here are the ones that tend to fail. Let's try this one first. Okay. Let's see what we get. Still short, same shorts there. Okay, let's try this one here. Let's see what we get. Same short remains. Let's go over here to this side. Still same short. This one here. Still the same. I really don't think it's one of these. But we'll keep knocking them off until we know for sure. We'll 
come back in and place new ones after we're done. Same shorts. Same short. Okay, let's see here. This one. Or this one. I really don't think it's any of these. But I'm going to keep going until I know for sure. Alright, so it's none of those caps. Let me go check something real quick. Alright, so what are we missing here? I don't think it's PMIC. It would be very odd if it was. Possible, but very odd. I mean, I guess it could be backlight driver. It's, it, it was in an area of corrosion. Trying to think of what else it could be before I go yanking shit off everywhere. Better yet, before I go yanking more shit off, if it is PMIC and it's just some light corrosion or something, I'm going to run it through the ultrasonic real quick since it's already up to temp. See what are these? Those are all codec lights. Let's see if SD RAM is short. I don't know if they're directly tied to each other or not. No, it's not shorter. Now there was corrosion up here around these I2C lines, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think that they would be the cause. Let me go run through the ultrasonic. Seven minutes. What do you all think? PMIC, one of the random caps or backlight driver even though it's underfilled it may have gotten enough of a shock because it looks like the LCD has been worked on 
could have drawn enough amperage to it to fuck it internally. And maybe it's drawing that line down. What would you all vote for? I'm kind of leaning in one direction, but I want to see what you all think. Chat's even paying attention. Doesn't look like chat's paying attention. <laughs> no way's answering. What do y'all think, chat? What's wrong with it? Economical to repair, yeah. If I can figure out what it is. I don't want to put too much more time on it. It's it's getting to the point it well it's not to the point yet. It, it's still fairly minor damage. But if it if it keeps going to where I have to keep putting more and more shit off, I'm gonna turn it into a data only recovery. Alright, so these are our two no power, not charging boards from earlier. They're both now on. So I'm going to turn those off. Okay. Those are ready for pickup. Touch I see that it did earlier off on six is done. I've also got a. Uh, I'm gonna mail out that iPad to Anthony. I got my new Thunderbolt cable in today. Big bitch. Apple certified, bro. I think it's fucking hefty. Two meter Thunderbolt cable. My one for my computer is only a uh, six inch cable. And I want to be able to route my computer and set it up on top so that the ventilation is a little better. So, I got me a six foot cable.
Come on. Hold Sonic. Beep. Touch the tips. Beep, beep, beep. Probably gonna take my computer home tonight because after I get my molar pulled out tomorrow, I'm probably not gonna come in for most of the day, so I'll be at home. So I'm gonna play some some computer games. Well, I'm hopped up on some pain meds. Hopped up on PCP, yo. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Alright, got our board out of the ultrasonic and dry it up. Some here. Need more air. this thing out. See how it looks now that it's nice and shiny? Mmm. Shiny. That ultrasonic is pretty good. It's a good job. It's good. Alright. Let's see if we still have a dead short on 1v8 if we do I'm gonna pull the all right so I'm gonna pull the backlight driver I don't know what else it could be unless it's just one of these random fucking caps or something or maybe PMIC just somehow shorted only on that line in the middle of other ones which I don't think is the case to be honest I don't find that to be a reasonable solution. Alright, so, I mean, there is a fair bit of damage around the, the backlight driver. You can see these caps. Some of the caps are kind of fucked up. Let's see what our diode reading on the backlight circuit is I mean it reads normal it's 0.5 so that's normal but let's go ahead and pull well pull let's go ahead and destroy our coil here to get it out of the way I gotta get some of these fucking wires out of the way there's too many goddamn wires don't have any fucking room I need a bigger desk or a custom desk so it works better for me Alright, so let's destroy our 
good looking coil here. Sorry coil. We love you. But we're not in love with you. hit my diode off there. That's alright. We can replace him. Pushed a little too hard. Knocked all that shit off. Alright, so let's feed some leaded solder onto these pads and get these coil ends off. Okay, and we got our coil ends off of there. Now we have some nice workspace. We can come in with our nice tweezers. Kind of work out some of this space here. Get rid of some of this underfill. there. Alright, now let's take off our driver. So I like to put flux down on top of the CPU. The reason is, is flux starts to melt and evaporate. It actually has a somewhat of a cooling effect or a transferring heat effect which better transfers the heat to my coin where I would much rather the heat go than into the CPU. So it kind of allows you to work around things like the CPU without having too much to worry about. So same method here. I'm putting a slight twisting motion against the IC. Okay, so it's starting to come loose. Alright, there it is. Now let's clean that out. I don't think any of these are going to be corroded, but there is a possibility that the IC had internally failed due to a possible spike maybe or something like that on the output line or even the input line and thus caused our 1v8 line to be short internally on the chip. We will find out here shortly if that hypothesis was correct or not. I could be completely wrong. There's a good chance I'm wrong. Usually these chips that are underfilled don't fail. Backlight is a bit of a sensitive chip though so would not be completely shocking if it wasn't fucked up. Alright, so let's find out if we were right or wrong. No, we're wrong. So, I'm still reading a low. Reading point, it's still the same amount. Alright, so it wasn't backlight driver, so what can it be? Now we're going to have to start hunting and pecking. Uh, is PMIC corroded underneath of it? I mean, I guess it can be. It would be really odd that PMIC would only be corroded in that one spot. I, I just don't, I don't know. Let's see, let's see. 
Let me pull the schematic back up. I want to see where else there's possibilities. this filter out real quick make sure that our output to our LCD is not fucked on that output cap that goes to the LCD panel because that is a possibility not very likely well I just fucking knocked that off what are you a capacitor you look like a capacitor. Pull a little flux down for you. Try to put you back into place. Cooperate for me. <sighs> Why? Why do you go down on one side and then come up with my tweezers instead of sticking to your pad? I don't have any fucking solder on my tweezers. Stick to your fucking pad. Probably still not stuck. Nope. Let's put some more flux down. Promote some adhesion here alright that finally went down on there at least it rebounded back which tells me that it's probably good So, now that we've got that kind of sorted, let's see if we lost our filter. Looks like it. It's okay. We'll find another one. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the input side. It is. So it's not that line. We'll come back to that. Man, what the fuck could be causing this? I guess it's it's got to be something to do with PMIC. I don't think it's NAND. NAND is very extremely... At least I've never seen one short. Looking down there where the... One V8 lines are for the different signal lines. They look good. Let me see if I can feel some heat. I don't think I will. It's just not a very strong short. I'm 
the fuck? Let's see. Felt like my PMIC was getting warm. Also had a. Uh, A little higher amperage draw that time for some reason. Just I'm sure will say, well, you caused your own short. Uh, I don't think so. So I just just melted because it was melting that time. Can't tell what's getting warm, what's not. This isn't a one V eight. So that's not it. It's just melting. Because there's just heat on the board. Alright. Let's see if we can catch something again. Let's see this I'm pretty sure this is a three volt line so I'll check it though just to make sure yeah it's not short no yes uh, the IR cameras are not they don't have a fine enough resolution you just kind of see a general area of heat. You can't really see much more. So I don't I don't tend to use them because of that reason. They've never seemed to really help me out. 
I know a lot of people have qualms against using pre-spray, but pff, whatever. I haven't had any problems out of them, really. I mean, this stuff's made for electronics, so it's made to find issues. Man, what is causing this? Fuck. It's making sense. It just doesn't make any sense what's fucking shorted here. I mean, it's still just dead shorted. 29 ohms. It's not a, it's not a zero ohm short, so it's not hot enough to draw any like excess of current I mean the only thing I can think is either it's NAND or it's fucking PMIC I guess pick all these fucking caps off just to make sure. What's the other one over this one here? I want to be thorough. Make sure we get all our tiny caps off too. Oh, still same short. I'm trying to think. The only thing left that really it could be. It's either going to be PMIC, some random cap, or NAND. What the fuck is that? Alright, is that SD RAM? What is that? That's 1v8 SD RAM. Uh, let's see. SD RAM's reading short also. Alright, so let's see. SD RAM, where's your location in? SD RAM and 1V8 are side by side underneath the PMIC. Is there ground nearby? Let's see. 1V8 grape is right next to them, too. Let's see what grape's doing. Grape is okay. Uh, who else is next door? 1B8 SD2s, no. Oscar. There's not, really not any ground near it. There's 1B2 SD RAM next to it. Let's see what it reads. It reads normal. This wasn't reading short earlier. I wonder why it is now.
All right, fuck it. I'll pull PMIC. If it's not PMIC, I'm going home. It's not PMIC, I'm going home. What the fuck are you up here? Here, BCC main cap. You look like dickhole. Go away. I'm going to fix that whenever I pull that off. Alright, pain in the dick chip. Time for you to go. I get my tweezers right. Pain on the dick chip's gonna be a pain on the dick. Cause I can't fucking grab it. Come on, tweezers. Don't fail me now. PMSC's off. And I don't see anything wrong with it. Let's flip it over. Yeah, PMSC's fine. Alright, so it wasn't PMSC. It's evidently soldered itself to that cap. PMIC, I don't think it is. Let's go ahead and check and see. Nope, still fucking shorted. Let's see if 1v8 SD RAM is still fucking shorted. There's a solder ball. That's good. Not really. That's probably from where I was removing the backlight driver. I don't think this area got hot enough though, honestly. This one's starting to turn into Lost Cause World, because now it's going to turn into hunting and pecking for a 1v8 line somewhere. is gonna suck dick. Yep, time to go home. I've pulled anything and everything I can off this phone. Um, the fact that they turned this on without clearing the corrosion, who knows what happened. The corrosion being up here around the backlight driver, this cap right here, or this filter, is CPU. Uh, some of these lines go to CPU. I mean, it just could be anything at this point. These phones are a nightmare sometimes. Sucks though, I was really hopeful was we got rid of the VCC main short pretty quickly but now we have a 1v8 short that isn't coming from there and there's only really one other option well there's a couple options but the main options are it's either coming from under the CPU which is possible or it's under the NAND, or it's some random cap on the board. So, indeed it is turning into a rabbit hole. So, I'm going to call it at that. And I'm going to go home. And I'm going to enjoy getting my fucking face drilled into tomorrow. Uh, I'll ship out these phones.
kind of disheartening. It's been a couple of phones today. This one was the one that was run over by a car. And I put a new NAND on it because the old NAND was acting weird. It had a NAND short on it. But I replaced the NAND on it. And it's telling me that the serial number is incorrect. So I was like, well, maybe I didn't program the serial number right. So I went back and checked the original NAND. Because the original NAND kept giving me an error 9. So I checked the uh, resistors going to the CPU. They're fine. So I was like error 9 every time. So the CPU's got to be having problems. So I reread the CPU. Double checked the serial number. Serial number matches correctly. It also matches the... Uh, the serial number on the SIM tray, this number here on the SIM tray, it matches that, which is not that board, it's this board. So I checked this serial number to the number that I was reading on the NAND, and it's correct, which that gives you like the information on it there. See, it's a 16 gigabyte, whatever. But that information is right on the NAND and it still keeps giving me an error 40 saying that the NAND serial number is incorrect. So I don't know what the fuck's wrong with it now. Um, so I've kind of given up on it. I'm going to try to restore it one more time before I let it go. But It's really frustrating because like, when I do the NANDs I'm very careful with them. I make sure that I clean them well. I do everything to a T. And I know... I know precisely that my fucking soldering is spot on. Because, like, I handball them with... Or not handball them, but I use pre-made balls. They don't even move. I nudge them to make sure they're in place. And they will not fucking restore sometimes. And it's more times than not, which is really aggravating. Because it makes no sense why it's not going to restore. Uh, it should. There's no reason it shouldn't. Did someone rebirth it with a different CPU? No. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know why it keeps saying that it's invalid serial number when I know the serial number is correct. I didn't change anything. I literally read the contents from the old NAND, wiped the NAND completely, wrote those contents to the NAND, and then put it on. And even when I put the original back on now, it won't it won't read. And I never I never even wrote to the original. All I did was read from it. So I don't know. But anyway, I will be off tomorrow for most of the day, and I will get back on the day after as long as my face situation isn't fucked up more than it already is. But I appreciate everyone watching. And if you get a chance and you haven't checked out Paul's channel, which I know most, most of you will have, but mosey on over there to Mr. Daniels. And I appreciate the donations again today. Uh, hopefully we can get something figured out with these other boards and I can make some more entertaining shit to look at. But we got three out of five done, so I guess that's good. Um, I don't think I have any more mail in. I think that's it. Anyway, I will see you all in a couple days. Everybody have a good night. Be safe. And, Paul, don't get attacked by any uh, koalas or wallabies or whatever the hell is down there. Later, Paul. And bye, everybody. Also, we're going to do the t-shirt contest drawing probably Friday. And we'll have the, uh, have the girlfriend go through and pick out some random names. But, see you later. The old drop bears.